I would like to thank uh, iSpy for reminding me yesterday that my when you have two strikes, I thought it was up until May 26th. When you have two strikes, you can't upload for two weeks. I guess I read it wrong. I thought it was three months because the first strike was uh, <clears throat> no no um, live streams. And then I got a strike right after that. I just assume my, ch my channel's getting shut down. So that's why I you know, made another one. Summer is near. So, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Robin Tees. Um, after further review, the second pitch that was thrown, it was actually a ball. It wasn't a strike. So I only have one strike. Alright. So, alright. Um, and this, I'm going to upload this video to Summer is Near also. For anybody who subscribed to that channel and didn't know about Robin's Hood channel. Uh, the one that I started with 10 months ago. Well, now you know. The main thing I want to get to is this. <clears throat> April 1st. As, uh, as Arf would say. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, good evening, YouTube. Uh, welcome. Uh, today's the uh, Thursday, uh, a March 22nd. Um, so they tell us. Apparently, it's not even the, the new year yet. Because the big old April Fool's joke is... <laughs> April Fool's! It's really the beginning of the new year. It's the first month. So, that first month, written about in Daniel, that Daniel talks about ha having to, to, to withstand the... the to tolerate uh, the king, uh, the princes of Persia, I believe it is. I'm going to get to it in a minute. I'll read it. <clears throat> but for 21 days, he eats no pleasant thing, nor wine. Um, whether that's... More than likely, it's spiritual meaning. That eating no pleasant thing is just... There's no, there's no true gospel anymore so when you look let me just read it get to it <clears throat> in the third year of Cyrus king of Persia a thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Belteshazzar and the thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and he had understanding of the vision in those days I Daniel was mourning for three full weeks in those days. So in the third years when he had the vision he understood it, but the time was appointed. It was it was it was a long period of time away. But he understood the, the vision. I ate no pleasant bread. Okay, well bread, bread of life, uh, water with the gospel, the uh, fountains of water so when he's eaten no pleasant bread, nor came flesh, nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And I just, I think about that, I've thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. Obviously, something's jumping off with this. 21 days but let me get to where he's talking about the first month <clears throat> this is chapter 10 and in the 4 and 20th day of the first month and I was by the side of the great river which is Hydekel now the 4 the 24th day of the first month the biblical calendar 
has always been different. And I remember it's the seventeenth day, seventeenth day of the second month is May twenty first. The seventeenth day of the second month is May twenty first. That's what I remember from Harold Camping's teachings. Now, this here, I mean, it's something that RFB has always said, so they tell us. And it all makes sense that the beginning of the new year is actually April 1st, because that's the big joke, right? Haha, <laughs> April Fools. Now, when you're not eating anything any pleasant bread, but you're not, you're not, there's no good gospel whatsoever. So is this the shift? Is this the shift on May 20, on April 1st? Is this when all of real channels do get shut down and then it's nothing but liars? I guess we'll find out, right? I mean, with this channel here, just like I said, I, I just assumed it was gone. I mean... That's why, you know, that's why that's there and not Robin's hood, you see? So I guess I better add that, <clears throat> you know, in case people want to pick up your cross and, uh, you know, pick up your cross and follow me and repent because, you know, the day of the Lord is fulfilled. So, uh, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded to the fine, with fine gold of Euphrates. His body also was like the burl, and his face is the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms as feet, in color to polished brass. Obviously, we know who we're talking about here. Um, and his feet were like the color of polished brass, and the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me, they saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into me into corruption, and I, re I remained no... I remain no strength retain no strength yet i heard the voice of his words and when i heard the voice of his words then i was in a deep sleep in my face and my face towards the ground and behold and a hand touched me which set upon me upon my knees upon the palms of my hands and he said to me "O daniel a man greatly beloved understand the words that i speak unto you unto thee you thee and stand upright for unto you am I now sent. It sounds like after these three weeks of eating no pleasant gospel whatsoever, that's when he's now sent, you know, Michael, the archangel, which explains that as I read. And for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I am come forth by your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, the prince of of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty-one days but lo Michael one of the chief priests came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia kings that's plural right of Persia what's what is Persia what what is the modern-day Persia now I am come to make 
you understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. How many? There's a, there's a part where it's, the vision is, is uh, when, when he understood the vision, understanding the vision, the time appointed was long, and down in verse 14, <clears throat> for yet the vision is for many days. Now, one day is one day, two days is a couple, three days is a few. After that, it's many. However many, I'm going to turn this down. Sorry, it's a, it's a little toasty in here. <clears throat> and when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground and I became dumb. This is this is where it's like it's like you understand this and then all of a sudden you don't. And then you understand this first, this chat, and then and then it comes to pass, and then after that it's like, huh? And then he comes and helps you understand once again. And you're like, oh, I, I get it. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have, re I, have re I have retained no strength. So once again, he has no strength. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? As for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, neither their breath left in me. Sounds like a time of severe trouble, right? Then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. So here he goes, he's strengthened again. And said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then he said, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. So you got the kings of Persia, and then now he's going to return. Michael, the archangel, is going to return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. So who is the modern day Grecia? And who is the prince of Persia? And who are the kings of Persia? <sighs> but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that withholdeth me in these days. And the, in these things which Michael, but Michael your prince. Chapter 11. Also I... In the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. So it sounds like Michael, the archangel, strengthened Darius the Mede. That's what it sounds like. Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. Yeah, so that's... It's God talking, basically. Behold, I mean, it's his word. So, but it, what I'm saying is that's not Daniel talking. It's still Michael. And I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. Okay. So here we go in Persia. Uh, see how similar it sounds to the United States here. With, with Trump being the, uh, the one that's... Uh, more stout than his fellow is and richer than all the others. <clears throat> At least on TV, it, it's portrayed that way because he's like a billionaire and everything. Uh, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. So let's see, who was, if he's the fourth and Obama was the third and, and uh, Bush was the uh, second and uh, 
and Clinton was the first, well then there you, there you have your fourth. If that's the case, I don't know. I'm just This is where my mind goes when I read it. Shall be, then the fourth shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength through his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. So, who is Grecia? Who is Grecia? Because once the prince of Grecia comes, then you know that that Michael the Archangel, when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. So there's a prince of Grecia, and then there's against the, the realm of Grecia. So there's a, a, a prince is going to come at us. <clears throat> and a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great, domi gr great uh, dominion and do according to his will. Sound familiar? And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. Bam, that's it. So, this, the, when people think that the Bible is, it goes down in line category, like 1 through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then each verse is like uh, a timeline, it doesn't work that way. God goes back and forth. He hops all around. It's up to you to figure out where he's at. Just like when, just like back in chapter 9, 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Who's he? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the prayers to cease. Who's he? Who can... And I know this, is, this has been talked about where it's Satan. But how does Satan cause the sacrifices of the prayers to cease? How does he cause the sacrifice of the prayers to cease? See, how th that doesn't make sense to me. The first one, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Okay, what, which covenant? Which, which agreement? To who? And who is he? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease. Again, how does Satan cause prayers to cease? Satan's the one that causes the prayers to ex exceed. You see what I'm saying? Cause them for to cease and for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate. Okay, maybe it's going back to talking about Satan again. It sounds like to me it's in the beginning he's talking about Satan, in the middle he's talking about God, and the, and the end he's talking about Satan again. Because that's how God does it. He'll say he, he, him, him, he, and you got to figure out who's he and who's him. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, okay? The abomination of desolation, right? Even until the consummation, which is the, which is the marriage of the Lamb and Christ, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So that's what I'm talking about where I don't care who says what. There's a week's period of time that he or he is going to uh, make a covenant but God is the one that can cause the prayers to cease because that's the time of salvation, lifting up. That's it. Prayers are done. No more praying. No more... No more praying. No more, no more crying. No more fear. No more nothing. That, that, that sounds like a little bit more online to me, but... I could be wrong. <clears throat> and the king of the south. All right, wait, where? Hold on. It's far richer. Okay. And a mighty king shall stand up and rule with great dominion and do according to his will. We're back in chapter 11. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And the king of the south 
shall be strong, and one of his princes, king of the south, you know, king of the north, king of the south, it looks like it's talking about South Korea and North Korea, right? But aren't we also North Korea's back, South Korea's backing, which would be the south, right? And he shall be strong above him, okay? And the king of the south shall be strong. And one of his princes, of, of one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. So let's just put those words, those great words. Come on, man. Look, if you want to hear the word of God, just, just watch my video, all right? That's all you gotta do. So just pay attention to the him and the he's. Because everybody assumes that it's talking about the same person just because it's in the same verse. And he shall... And the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes, one of his princes, you know, one of his princes, the king of the south, and he shall be strong above him. Does that mean the prince is going to be stronger than the king? And have great dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And in the end of the years, they shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south. The king's daughter of the south. Does Trump have a daughter? Shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. This is something that I said this about 10 months, eight months ago. Trump is going to go to North Korea. They're going to, they're going to talk about trying to make a peace deal or something or another. And from what I'm hearing now, that's, that's exactly what they're trying to do. But that's neither here nor there. Okay. It's, 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 it's neither here or there. It's over, it's around there somewhere. But she shall not retain the power to arms Neither shall he stand, nor his arm, but she shall be delivered up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. It's a lot of he's and him's and hers, right? It's confusing. But out of a branch of her roots, her, you know, the great Babylon, the mystery, the, the, the harlot, or is it talking about a, a, a woman? Just, just a regular woman. But out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them and shall prevail. So it sounds like we're going to destroy North Korea on, on TV. The TV bombs. Like, like the, the letter I wrote back in April April 7th of last year when I was explaining this stuff here, this warning. Alright, I was a year ahead of my time, whatever. But out of the branch of her roots shall stand up one in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them and shall prevail. And shall also carry captives into Egypt their God, with their princes and with their precious vessels of silver and gold. That isn't going to be worth crap. So I don't know why anybody would want to buy any of it. Or... There he is. Alright, get out. Alright, just put your lights on and stand there and act like you're on your phone. But don't look at him. And shall carry, also carry captives into Egypt, their gods, with their princes and with their precious vessels of silver and gold. And he shall continue more years than the king of the north. Where is the verse that says that years or days? I don't know. I just know there is one. So is it more years or is it more days? Just like the thousand years is as a day and a day is a thousand years. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom. I'm talking. The king of the south to me is, is Trump. Okay, I'm just flat out saying it. 
The king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. But his sons, <laughs> boy, Jerry Kushner and all those guys, aren't they involved? But his sons shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return. Who's he? And be stirred up even to his fortress. Sounds like Trump's going to be a little pissed off. And the king of the south shall be moved with challer, which is anger, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. Fight with him? Like with him? Or fight with him? The word with, you know, a thousand days is is with the Lord, okay? To reign with Christ for a thousand years. Reign with. And the king of the south shall be moved with anger and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall set forth a great multitude... But the multitude shall be given into his hand. Whose hand? Well, his hand, obviously. And when he has taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. Now, is this going to be many ten thousands that we're going to see being destroyed on TV? With these TV bombs? For the king of the north... Ching Chong Ming, right, shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. Is that years or days? Well, it says years, so it has to be years, right? But why would the other verses say that a, a day is a year? Just to get you to study harder. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. They have a vision that they're trying to establish, which is the entire end times prophecy written out uh, verse by verse on TV. And in those days, times there shall stand up against... The king of the south, also the robbers of thy people, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. Now, who are they? Well, the elite. Okay? They shall fall. Because they're trying to establish a vision here. And it's just severely obvious what they're trying to do. <clears throat> so the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount. And take the most fenced cities. Now, I said this a long time ago. The most fenced cities sounds like to me uh, Hawaii or uh, Guam or uh, Alaska, like like the those those fenced cities, or it could even be New York and California. That you know the ones that are the most important ones. sure somebody's really injured and in those times shall stand up the king of the south and also the robbers shall start their vision so the king of the north shall shall come and cast up a mountain and cast the most fenced cities and the arms of the south shall not withstand so our military isn't going to withstand at one point america is going to be first destroyed right completely you know that great city that great babylon America, America has fallen, has fallen, that great city. I mean, uh, Babylon. So the king of the north shall come and cast up a mountain, take the most fenced city, and the arms of the south shall not withstand. Neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall Stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land. Now I know everybody thinks this is Jerusalem. But is it possible that it's America? The glorious land? 
the land of milk and honey that people have been promised. And he shall stand in a glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. Well, yeah, to me it just sounds like Trump is, uh, you know, on TV, he's, uh, he's standing in a glorious land, and by his own hand it shall be consumed, because, you know, he's coming in peaceably, uh, with flatteries. I'm going to read, I'm going to have to finish this with another video, but... He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do. And he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her. But she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. Him and him. Neither one. After this, Shall he turn his face unto the isles, and shall take many, the isles, the lands, and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. A lot of he's and him's, man. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Doesn't that sound like Hitler? And how we're playing the end times prophecy out again, but this time, this is the last time. Because of all the technology, you, you just know. Then shall stand up in his estate. See how it says then, as if it's right directly after? But it, to me, it seems like he's going back again. Or is this... No, this one then is right after. Because he shall stumble... Okay, he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days, three or more, he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate... Now this is where it sounds like it's going back. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, Trump, who they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. That's 21. I'm going to have to continue with chapter 11, verse 22.